You want to learn how to program your Bofang UV5R radio using the Chirp programming software? Well, on this episode of KMRD Radio Stuff, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Now we're ready to open up all of the possibilities with the UV5R by using the Chirp software to program this. Now, before we get too deep into this, you absolutely have to get a programming cable for your Bofang UV5R. Now, I recommend this programming cable from Baofeng Tech. I have no affiliation with them whatsoever, but it's a great cable. You don't need any drivers. It's got the FTDI chip in it. It's 20 bucks. There are cheaper ones online. They're not very good, trust me. Just get this one from Baofeng Tech and you will have no issues. Now you'll wanna go ahead and plug in your programming cable to your UV5R. And now we need to download Chirp, which can be found at chirp.danplanet.com. And you'll simply click this Get It button. You can get it for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And I will leave a link uh, to this program in the description. So now that we have the Chirp software downloaded and installed, our radio is plugged in, we're ready to start programming. The first thing we need to do is click on this radio button here, and we're going to download from the radio. We're going to click on that. Now, under port, you're going to need to find which port you're using. Pick whichever one is your USB device, your USB cable. And then we're going to select which brand. In this case, we're using Bofang, but you can see there's all kinds of different brands in here. And then we're going to collect, uh, select the model. And in this case, we're using a UV5R. Then we're going to simply hit OK. Then this thing comes up. You can just hit OK. And we should see cloning, and on the radio, you can see that that little light is blinking, although it is hard to see on camera. Things are happening. And what this is doing, you need to read from the radio so the program can populate this spreadsheet, and now we can start entering our data. So now we have, with the UV5R, up to 127 different memories we can store in here. Let's start with uh, let's start with number one. I'm going to program a repeater, and we're simply going to double click under the frequency there, so we can edit it. And I'm going to type in the frequency 146.860. And here is where we can name this. So this you can name it whatever you want. You do you are limited by the number of characters, but I'm just going to call this W5HVL because that's the call sign for the repeater. Now we can select our tone or the type of tone. This particular repeater has a digital tone squelch, so I'm gonna type DCS, or select rather. Then under this DCS code, this one has a code of 631, so I'm gonna to go to 631, enter that in. Here we can already see it. It already has the offset and the uh, repeater mode, plus or minus, uh, so we don't need to do anything. We can change the power from high to low and that's about all we need. If we have scan, we can hit uh, S and that will skip it or we can leave it blank and if you choose to scan, it'll, it'll add that. So that channel or uh, repeater is programmed. Let's say I want this zero as, uh, let's just say I want it as 146.520 and I'll just call that uh, two meter simplex, something like that. No offset. No direction, no nothing, very simple. Let's program another repeater in. Let's say 443.900. This will be the WA5AIR repeater. That has a tone of 100. So here is where you're gonna type in your uh, analog tones. The, the tone is, is more typical than this DCS. Not too many repeaters use this. DTCS. Most of the time you're going to use tone here. And again, this has a plus uh, offset and the offset is five megahertz. And again, we can change high to low power, whatever you want to use there. That is done. Let's go ahead and do one more just for giggles. This one will be 147.120. And this is also a W5 AIR. So I'll call this AIR uh, MGR for Montgomery. This has a tone of 100 as well. So we can hit tone and then change this to 100. Already has our plus and our offset. We are good to go. And you're going to just continue this until you have everything done. If you want to go ahead and save it, you can hit save as and we'll just put test for this. Hit enter and now that's saved. So if you want to go back and 
edit this later. You can always go back and, and change your frequencies and everything without having to redo everything uh, all over again. Now, if I want to write this to the radio, we're simply going to hit radio, upload to radio. And this should already be set because we just read from the radio. Hit OK, hit OK again, and now we can see that little light is blinking and it is writing all of this data to the radio. And now we can see if we hit the VFO memory button, all of those stations are changed in, but we're not seeing the names, so what gives? Well, there's a way to change that. Up here under the settings tab, we've got a lot of different options here. Now under display mode, we have this just as frequency. I like to keep them as the names, so we can change this to name. You can change it to channel, and basically what that would say is if you're on channel one, it'll say channel one. If you're on channel two, it'll say channel two. I don't find that very useful. I like to keep the names on there. We can also change the colors of when it's on standby, when it's on transmit, and uh, when it's on receive. So standby right now is purple. Maybe I want that blue. Maybe I want my transmit or receive rather to be purple and my transmit to be orange. Here is uh, your carrier squelch. You can change that. Here's your backlight timer, timeout. I like to keep that about 10 seconds. And let's go ahead and save that again. We'll write it to the radio again by hitting radio, upload to radio, hit OK, hit OK again. Little light is blinking. We're now writing all that information to the radio. And the radio is rebooting. And now you can see we have that two meter simplex that we programmed in. We've got the W5HVL and we've got the WA5AIR and the air uh, montgomery there so now we can see the tags that we have labeled this some other settings if you go under advanced settings here you can check your your vox your dual watch your dual watch priority so what this means is uh, when dual watch is on if you want to have a priority so maybe i i always want to have one particular repeater on channel a and if i have another repeater on channel b well uh, it's going to basically give priority to channel A if uh, it receives both uh, repeaters on channel A and channel B. So that's uh, something you can have on there. Uh, voice, you can change that to English. You can change it off. You can do a lot of these things on the radio too, but I find it's a lot easier to do uh, in the software. A lot of this stuff I don't really mess with. Busy channel lockout, that's going to basically, if, if the uh, radio is receiving, it's going to prevent you from using the PTT so you don't double with somebody or, or uh, interfere with them. If you're new, that might be something to have on just to prevent some of those oops moments there. Here you have broadcast radio, squelch tail eliminate. You don't really need to mess with any of this. Under other settings here, when you turn your radio on, you can actually have a message. Uh, in my case, I like to have my call sign, and so I just put KMRD radio for KMRD radio stuff. Work mode settings, this is some things you might want to set up. So when you turn your radio on, this memory A channel and memory B channel, so let's say I want to have memory two uh, when I turn my radio on on VFO A, and let's say I want to have memory four on VFO B. So those are going to be the default frequencies when I turn my radio on. And then same thing for uh, when it's on VFO, I would like to have 146.520 as my VFO A frequency and 446.000 as my VFO B frequency. I don't want any shifts on those because those are just simplex. Don't need an offset either. And here we can set our VFO A and our VFO B power bandwidth. You can pretty much leave that on wide for ham radio. And that's about all you'd need for work mode settings. You've also got an FM radio. So if you want to type in your favorite FM radio station, uh, I think here where I am, it's 106.9 maybe. I don't really listen to radio, so I don't know. DTMF settings, I haven't used these, but if you're in a DTMF and, and you can type in your tones, this is where you do that. And uh, service settings, I've not needed either. So now that we have those saved, again, let me go ahead and just save that. And then we'll go ahead and write to the radio by hitting radio, upload to radio, and OK, and OK. Again, cloning, lights are blinking, things are happening, life is good. And once the radio is done cloning, it'll go ahead and reboot. And now you can see these frequencies. Uh, I actually didn't have anything on four, so I had to redo this and put it on three. But when it reboots, uh, it's automatically going to go to frequency or channel two and channel three, respectively. And then our VFOs are 14652 and 446, just like we programmed in. And then we have all the frequencies that we've programmed in, named, channelized, and stored just like that easy peasy.
And that is it. Now you have become a master of programming the UV5R using the Chirp software. Very easy. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them below in the comments, and I'll be sure to try and answer them as best I can. If you haven't already, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter at KMRD, and we'll see you again on another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.